Perhaps you are familiar with vertex cuts. A vertex cut of a graph is a set of vertices that, when deleted, disconnects the graph. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be talking about a similar concept, but for edges. We, of course, are talking about edge cuts. So if you're already familiar with vertex cuts, a lot of this language will seem familiar. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on vertex cuts if you want to check that out. But it's certainly not necessary for this lesson. This is clearly a connected graph. We can travel between any pair of vertices, but we could disconnect it if we deleted a few edges. For example, suppose we delete the edges E1, E2, and E5. Then the resulting graph is disconnected. So if we say that X is the edge set containing those edges we just deleted, E1, E2, and E5, and let's say that our original graph was called G, then what we're looking at now is the graph G minus X, and we see G minus X is disconnected. Therefore, X is called an edge cut of the graph G. It's a set of edges that, when deleted, leaves behind a disconnected graph, a graph that has been cut. So, putting our original edges back in the graph, so this is our original graph G, if this graph, for example, modeled the roads going between different neighborhoods, and suppose we want to close a couple of the roads to begin construction, then if we choose to simultaneously close and work on roads that make up an edge cut, well, that would not be a good idea because that will disconnect the graph, so that will make it impossible to travel between certain pairs of neighborhoods. If we close down the roads E1, E2, and E5 at the same time, we can't get from here to here. So that's just an example of when edge cuts might be of interest to someone. Now that we've seen an example, let's quickly take a look at the definition written out. An edge cut in a non-trivial graph G is a set X of edges of G such that G minus X is disconnected, just like we said. We specify non-trivial graph because if we've got a trivial graph, just one vertex and no edges, this is a connected graph that cannot be disconnected. So we cannot consider edge cuts in a trivial graph. Additionally, notice that it's only necessary that G minus X is disconnected. It's not necessary that deleting the edges in the edge set X is actually what disconnected the graph. So for example, suppose we've got this graph here that is already disconnected. Then any set of edges in this graph is technically an edge cut. So, for example, if we call these two edges E1 and E2, the set just containing E1 is an edge cut of this graph, because if we delete that edge, well, of course, the graph is disconnected. It was already disconnected, and after we delete the edge, it still is. Additionally, the empty set is an edge cut of the graph, so edge cuts do not have to be non-empty. If we delete no edges, the graph is disconnected, so the empty set is, by definition, an edge cut of disconnected graphs. So with those few points about the definition out of the way, let's scroll back up to our example to talk about a couple different special types of edge cuts. Our edge cut X is what's called non-minimal, or not minimal. This is because X contains edges that make up a smaller edge cut than it. In other words, X is a non-minimal edge cut because there is another edge cut that's a proper subset of X. Do you see what that edge cut is? Instead of deleting E1, E2, and E5, we could disconnect the graph by just deleting E1 and E5. So if we call this edge cut, uh, let's say Y, Y is the set containing E1 and E5. This is another edge cut that is a proper subset of X. That's why X is non-minimal. Again, it contains edges, E1 and E5, that make up a smaller edge cut. Y has only two edges, X has three. Then our edge cut Y is a minimal edge cut. It's minimal because it does not contain edges that make up a smaller edge cut. There is no edge cut that's a proper subset of Y. Deleting just E1 would not have disconnected the graph, and deleting just E5 would also not have disconnected the graph. So Y is a minimal edge cut. Furthermore, Y is what's called a minimum edge cut. 
This is because there does not exist any other edge cut in the graph that has fewer edges than y. There is an edge cut with just as many edges if we delete the edge e2 and the edge e4 that disconnects the graph and it's only two edges. So a minimum edge cut does not have to be unique. But y is a minimum edge cut because there is no smaller edge cut in the graph. That means to disconnect this graph we need to delete at least two edges. And of course, they can't just be any two edges, they have to be two particular edges that make up a minimum edge cut. So for our graph G, the cardinality of Y, a minimum edge cut, is equal to 2. And this is called the edge connectivity of the graph. So you can think of the edge connectivity of a graph as being the minimum number of edges that we need to delete in order to disconnect a graph. So among all edge cuts in a graph, the one of minimum cardinality, its cardinality is the edge connectivity. And of course, we have notation for this. This is written as lambda of the graph, lambda of g. So in this case, lambda of g, the edge connectivity, is equal to 2. You may recall that the similar concept for vertices, vertex connectivity, is denoted kappa of g. For this graph, the vertex connectivity is also equal to 2 because we need to delete at least two vertices to disconnect the graph. In general, how do you think the edge connectivity and vertex connectivity relate? Do you think one is always greater than or equal to the other, or do you think there is no particular pattern? Let me know what you think in the comments. We'll talk about it in a future lesson. Another important thing you might want to remember is that a minimal edge cut is not necessarily a minimum edge cut. For example, consider this set of edges, we'll just call it S, containing the edges E6, E7, and E3. So those are these three edges here. Notice that they make up an edge cut. If we delete them, the graph is disconnected. Then, do these three edges make up a minimal edge cut? The answer is yes indeed they do. S is a minimal edge cut. Because again, it does not contain any edges that make up a smaller edge cut. We could delete any two of the edges in the set S and it still wouldn't be enough to disconnect the graph. So S is a minimal edge cut. However, it's certainly not a minimum edge cut because a smaller edge cut exists in this graph. The edge cut Y, for example, which has just two edges compared to the three edges in S. So S is minimal, but not minimum. Although certainly, if an edge cut is minimum, then it must be minimal. Otherwise, it couldn't possibly be minimum because we could find a smaller edge cut using some of its edges. Let's mention one last thing about edge connectivity. We already said that we don't consider edge cuts within the trivial graph because it can't be disconnected. However, we do, for convenience, define the edge connectivity of the trivial graph to be equal to zero. Similarly, the edge connectivity of any disconnected graph is zero, because zero edges need to be deleted to disconnect it. A concept kind of related to edge cuts are bridges. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on bridges if you're interested. A bridge is basically a single edge that when deleted disconnects the graph or the component it belongs to. And interestingly, bridges have a very close connection to cycles. So check that out, links in the description if you're interested. In any event, I hope this video helped you understand what edge cuts, minimal edge cuts, and minimum edge cuts are in graph theory. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you find these lessons helpful, I hope you'll consider supporting Wrath of Math through a small donation on PayPal or a small monthly pledge on Patreon. I'll leave links to those in the description. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description.